There's a fuzz. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Vietnam Vegan and today we're making noodles. Now, before I get into this recipe, I will admit that this recipe got me good, okay? I've been trying to test this over and over and over. I've made it eight times now. They are delicious, but boy, howdy, did I struggle to get this right. In order to make this recipe, you'll have to have made my seitan recipe with the wash flour method. The water that you need to use to make this, the wheat starch liquid, is from that. If you wanna make it with wheat starch that you buy in powder form, you can absolutely do that. I don't have a recipe for that. I will link one down below. Side note, I did not expect that seitan recipe to go as viral as it did. I mean, the video on YouTube itself, not that viral, but on TikTok, which I did not expect to pop off the way it did. I like uploaded it at like 11 o'clock one night being like, ah, whatever, no one's gonna hear about this. I posted at 11, went to sleep, woke up, and I was like checking in through my social media and I saw my TikTok and I was like, oh cool, 15 likes, that's like, pretty good because I think at that point I had like 200 followers and then I like blinked a little bit more before I realized there was a K beside that 15 and I had 15 K likes at the time and I was like excuse you it went viral and now it has over a million loops on it is that what you call it loops views watches how do TikTok I don't know anyway I did not expect it to go the way it did there are a lot of people who have a lot of feelings about Satan and a lot of people mad that it sounds like Satan Satan and Satan <laughs> I don't know, I'm not Christian, so that doesn't apply to me. But for anyone who is wondering, Satan is called Satan because it's from the Japanese Satan. There are other words for it in different cultures. Um, I don't even know what it's called in Vietnamese, but in Chinese it's typically called, like when it's translated to just gluten. Wheat meat, gluten, Satan, whatever the heck you wanna call it, that's what you need ha to have made in order to make these noodles. Anyway, that's my little anecdote of the day. With your starchy water, you're gonna pour off the water. You're gonna wait at least four hours for the water to like separate from the wheat starch. Pour off as much as you can, and then I use like a kind of wide, shallow spoon to scoop off the rest. When in doubt, you can just scoop out more because you can always add more water, but you can't really take water out. Here's the tricky part. Depending on when I made this and how long I waited for the starch to settle, the batter was thicker or thinner. So I can't say, you know, pour one cup of water per two cups of liquid because it'll depend on how thick your wheat starch liquid is. You're just gonna have to play it by ear. You can do the first test batch and like when in doubt, start off with less water and add more as you need. So I use these pans to make my noodles. I specifically wanted a non-stick stainless steel pan. If you have like those Wilton non-stick dark pans, those would work. My cake pans are made out of like a lighter aluminum and they're not quite non-stick. So I bought these specifically for these noodles because it was defeating me how much they were sticking to my pan and these pans work amazingly i bought these at my local asian market and they're just regular kind of flat mixing bowls they're nothing superb or crazy you want as flat as they can be there's a little bit of a rise in the middle of mine that didn't really affect my noodles at all yeah i'm not gonna lie i love these things i have these on hand all the time now i use them to prep my food anytime i have vegetables to chop up one of them holds the chopped up vegetables and one of them holds the scraps. And it's just really nice, really shallow. I love it, it's amazing. You're gonna bring a pot or a wok of water to a boil, cover with a lid and just leave it on the stove at like a steady simmer. So to make the batter, you're gonna pour off about two cups of batter. Ideally, it should look this runny before you're adding the water. It'll be kind of thick. It'll be like the consistency of like a fairly thin pancake batter. The ratio that I've been using for these noodles is two parts starch water, one part water. But what you can do is you can start with just pure wheat starch and see how it goes. George from Shea George or Chef George, he does it just straight wheat starch water. He pours off the excess water, of course, but he doesn't add more water. He doesn't add any salt into his noodles. I can link his recipe down below. I tried making it that way and it just didn't quite work for me. I think you need salt in the noodles to give it a little bit of flavor because obviously you're gonna season them, but the noodles themselves are like really stodgy without any salt. And I also found that the batter was too thick. And when I had like an even layer across the bottom of my pans, it was just like a little too thick for me. One of the things that you really need to make sure when you're making these noodles is that they need to be fully cooked through. If they're the texture of putty or if they like kind of like fall apart and don't come off the bottom 
of your pan easily, then you need to cook it longer or you need to thin out the batter and then cook that longer as well. I think for my ladles, I used about one and a half or two ladles, depending on how thin the batter was. Let me just measure how much liquid that is. It was about 75 milliliters of liquid, about a third of a cup. Again, this totally depends on the size of your vessel. You wanna aim for about a one eighth of an inch batter. I add a little bit of salt, like maybe a quarter teaspoon for the amount of batter that I had. You mix it up and you want the batter to have this like kind of thin runny consistency. It shouldn't be too thick, but it shouldn't be too splashy. Another thing that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to prepare your sink with a layer of cold water. You can also use another bowl and add ice and make ice water with it, but I just used my sink because it was easier. To cook your noodles, you're going to first oil those pans. I use just like either my hands or a pastry brush with some oil, any sort of oil. I used vegetable or canola oil here. Then you're gonna add your one third cup or however thick of a batter that you want. And then you're gonna put it in the water and sort of like level it so that it actually is straight. My oven is crooked. It's a little slanted. When I put like a stainless steel thing at the bottom of my wok to like rest the pan on, I found that the noodles would cook tilt it so there'd be one side that was like really thin and would overcook and there's one side that was really thick and would not be cooked through. The magic of water is that you can sort of level it without resting on anything because it'll just float in the water level. Cover with a lid and cook through for about three to four minutes. A lot of places I saw said to cook for two minutes. I never found that two minutes was enough for me. Cook until you'll start to see bubbles like push from underneath the middle of the batter. That's how you know that it's fully cooked through. If you find that there are cracks, that usually ends up happening once that bubble bursts through. When that's done cooking, pull that out of the steamer, oily wok situation and put it into your sink of cold water. Let that cool. You wanna do these with metal pans and not glass pans because you don't want the glass to shatter when it goes from hot to cold, cold to hot. That's some like science 101, you know? Glass is not super great at expanding and shrinking with temperature changes. While that's cooling, you're gonna prepare your next tray of batter, oil the pan, add your batter, level the batter in the water, put the lid on and set a timer for three to four minutes. When that is done, you'll find that the pan that you're using is probably cool enough to touch, which means that you can take the noodles out. You're gonna brush the noodle with some oil so that it doesn't stick to itself. You'll take a spatula or your hands or however you wanna do it and remove it gently from the pan. It should come off in one piece. If it breaks, not a huge deal. If it comes off kind of like pudding or like Play-Doh, you didn't cook it enough. It'll be a little bit of trial and error and you'll have to sort of like dial in the batter and the timing of the cooking. Every time that you ladle another batch of the noodle batter into the pan, you wanna give the whole thing a stir because as you will probably feel, the wheat starch at the bottom will settle. So you're gonna repeat this cycle of oiling the pan, the batter, cooking, steaming, cooling, pulling out. This should make about three to four servings of noodles depending on how much noodle you like to eat. Actually, this batter I think made us two servings, but they were two fairly large servings. You play it by ear, okay? I haven't tried storing these noodles at all. I don't know how they work stored that long. I end up just eating them right away. So to serve, I like to put a mixture of black vinegar, soy sauce, and either Szechuan oil or sesame oil. There's so many different versions. I think Chef George has like a roasted sesame slash peanut butter sort of mixture that kind of reminds me of like Dan Dan noodles. So, you know, the topping is really up to you. I just use one part soy sauce, one part black vinegar, and one part oil, whichever oil you like. I like sesame, but I've also made my own Szechuan oil before. I cooked about one cup of oil and heated up really nice and shimmery on the element. And then I poured it over a mixture of sliced ginger, cinnamon, Szechuan pepper, chili flakes, and cloves. And it was a very delicious time. You just poured the oil on top of the spices in like a heat proof bowl or a heat safe bowl, like a metal bowl. You let those sizzle and then you strain the oil afterwards. And you have this nice fragrant spiced oil that you can use. I just keep it on my counter and use it for noodle toppings, soups, whatever you want. But yeah, that is in a nutshell, these noodles. Like I said, I tried so many different versions to try to like standardize this, but really it depends on how much water you're able to pour out or how much you are able to wait for the starch to settle in your bucket. These noodles are so, so good when you get it right. They're like really bouncy, but also very like slippery and like chewy, but like not so chewy that you're spending a lot of time chewing them. They're just a unique kind of noodle. It's really, really good. So if you make wash flour seitan, I highly recommend 
recommend that you make these long pea noodles because they are just so, so good. They're just a great time. And they're probably one of my favorite noodles. They're just a bit of a pain to make. If you are not bad like I am, then I'm sure they're really easy for you. <laughs> Most other people that I see making these noodles do not struggle with them at all. I think it's just a me problem. I'm not really sure. Anyway, I hope you try out these noodles, especially if you're making seitan. The seitan fried or like seared to go on top of these noodles with some cucumber, cilantro, and a bit of green onion is a really, really good time. I highly recommend it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my 90s overall sort of weirdo baby look. It's a good time. I'm leaning into it. The whole scrunchy top ponytail overalls situation i'm into it i'll leave a sort of more descriptive recipe in the description down below on my blog with photos so you can see you know something to reference to you kind of have to adjust and judge based on what you have in front of you so yeah thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a delicious day bye